see, people have to understand we weren't talking to anyone individually. Mm -hmm. We were speaking to the culture as a whole. There's numerous people that choked in the first round recently. It's not just Loaded Lux. Right. So we weren't really pointing to him. And if you notice, he said recently, Loaded Lux battled a year ago. Yeah. So we actually weren't talking about Loaded Lux. Okay. I think that, you know, Loaded Lux has a new mixtape coming out. You're gonna get this work. And I think he saw a great opportunity for himself to do some promotion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he, he jumped at it, which he's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think that, you know, Lux is actually learning how to promote himself. And he's learning to see certain opportunities that he thinks will be beneficial to him. And, you know, it's actually working because mm -hmm. you're talking about it in this interview. But um, in terms of us paying Lux, it was more of a situation of, what's going to be economically sound for us as a company. You know, the money that Lux is requesting to battle is, 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 is very significant. Man. It's a significant amount of money and there's no guarantee on the return of that money. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's already out there the type of money that he's looking for. Right. So I'm sure that his opponent is not going to want to take less than half you know what I mean? And then to people don't have to understand, like to get a venue to accommodate and recoup that type of money is gonna run be any like fifty, sixty thousand dollars. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The venues within New York City that cost that amount of money are fifty to sixty thousand dollars. So now you compound that with what Lux wants, what his opponent wants, and then we haven't even counted production. And when you go into those big venues, you got union fees, you have numerous fees that, you know, that, that pile up that you have to be responsible for. And then you also have to put together another card. It's not just those two guys. You mm -hmm. got to at least give them three, four more battles, at least. Yeah, at least. And those guys are going to want money and right. be flown in and put in hotel rooms and chaperone to the venue. So, you know, this is just a, a big expense, you know what I mean? So. I don't think I, I think Lux's performance was great. You know what I'm saying, and I wouldn't. I'd be lying if I told you that I didn't want to see the Lux in the High Low to Dime battle. Mm -hmm. But you know, it has to be some type of balance. There has to be a point where the two parties can meet, and for the sake of themselves and for the sake of the culture, it has to it has to be able to work. Mm -hmm. Now I've made some offers towards Lux that are very significant offers. You know what I'm saying? But he's turned those offers down. Now, you know, being that we're the company and the platform, people kind of view us as the big bad wolf or they think that we have all this money just to throw around, which is actually not the case. Even though the perception of URL is big mm -hmm. and a lot of people are watching it and tuning in, it still is a niche audience that watches it and it actually comes out to attend. Right. So, right. you know, you have to make sure that and all your expenses can be covered. Mm -hmm. So it's a tough call. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, who knows? You know, there was a lot of things that made that battle big. One, it was his first battle back in years. Two, we set the platform. Three, you know, Smack spoke with Puff and Buster and Q-Tip. And he had, like, the right people in the building. And mm -hmm. he had the cameras on him. And yeah, yeah. everybody was there. And it was packed events. So there was a lot that went into making that battle so epic, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I, I just don't think that, you know, anybody else can do what we do in that sense. And it'll just be interesting to see how everything pans out. But that's really what it was about. It's not us having the money and just saying, you know what, we don't want to see this. Because we've taken plenty of hits and done plenty of events where we never recouped the money. We've done events, we've let people in for free and paid everybody on the card. But a lot of times, fans forget that. You know what I'm saying? We release the stuff free on YouTube, we don't charge, we don't stream. So, people really have to understand the cost that it takes to put on a battle of that magnitude. Well, like you said, man, everybody, I can't determine what anyone's worth is. Right. You know what I mean? Well, I can, I, I can determine what I think it what their worth is business wise, what the what the return on the investment is gonna be. But I can't, you know, if you wanna be fifty thousand, you can be fifty thousand, sixty thousand, a hundred, you could be a million dollars. The fact is is somebody gonna pay you for that though. You know what I mean? What's realistic? And, 
you know, just as an artist or a businessman, you have to look at who you're charging and say, can they really afford to pay that? Is there a way that this could be possible? You know, before you just make that number up, mm -hmm. you know, so it's just like, it's the reverse of me saying, well, uh, I'm gonna give you $200 to do your performance. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Cause that's what I think is what, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I think you're worth. So, in one hand, I understand why he wants to charge that much, but on the other hand, you know, if you say that you're you want this culture to grow, it's his responsibility, as you know, because many look at him as the leader, mm -hmm. for him to make this happen. It's his responsibility to make it happen. So, if someone's if I'm offering you something good it may not be forty thousand but it's probably more money than you've gotten paid to do anything else in entertainment in your life you need to jump on that offer mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. so you know i i say that to say you know lux is a super talent i would love to do the battle and hopefully you know we can come to some type of agreement or middle ground or maybe there's some crazy sponsor in Dubai who wants this to happen and wants to hit the URL up and make this work but there has to be some type of middle ground there I think the URL has extended themselves a lot we've made some really really good offers to Lux some serious offers that would definitely hurt us in the long run because what people don't understand is like if I just get up and I say, okay, we raised this 40000 I just give this money to Loaded Lux, mm -hmm. what's going to happen is people are going to say, well, Loaded Lux deserves to have $40,000 because he got 3 million views, right? Then I'm going to get guys like, I can, I'm just using their names, I'm just saying hypothetically, mm -hmm. you could get a guy like Averb, T-Rex, Hitman Holler, could easily come back and say, well, you know what? My battle got 1.5 million views. I want $20,000. Mm -hmm. You gave him 40, give me 20. I got half of what he got, right? And now, who, who am I to tell them that they can't get that money? How do I justify right, right. giving Lux that money, but not them what they want, if we're basing it solely off of views and attention? Absolutely. Lux didn't have the attention that he has before he did that battle on URL. He was not getting called, he was not getting posted on the blogs like that. Mm -hmm. He got that from doing the performance at URL. Did it help us? Yes, it did. It was great. Mm -hmm. It helped URL tremendously. Did it help battle rap culture? Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But what many people don't know, we did the same thing the year before in the same venue, the same amount of people as Summer Madness won. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the two go hand in hand. Yes, it was helpful. Yes, I would love to do the battle. But there has to be some middle ground there where it makes sense for both parties. I think that... Uh, I know you said it was promotion. For right, I think it was promotion. But I thought that, you know, he could have done it a little bit. You know, he, I, I didn't think he needed to do that. You know what I mean? Because I've read some articles that he's, that he's you know, some interviews from him mm -hmm. recently. Where he stated a few things. And some of those things just were not true. Just false. You know what I mean? So, you know, when once you do that, once you put like the actual negotiations out into the public, like you've kind of, you gotta kind of start from scratch when you're dealing with business. Mm -hmm. And then it just, and then if things don't go the way that you intended or something happens, now you've kind of left it open for other people to try to negotiate the same terms that maybe you had or were privy to. Right. So. I just didn't think that was cool, you know what I mean? But it's, you know, it's whatever, man. Yeah. You know, guys do what they want to do to uh, try to secure uh, or maintain their legacy. And, you know, they're going to come at us because what people don't, what Lux doesn't understand is that we are his biggest outlet, whether he wants to admit it or not. You know what I'm saying? It's the battle community first, mm -hmm. and then the mainstream media or the guys who may have seen his battle last year and thought it was so spectacular and just jumped on the bandwagon and started tweeting about it now. Those fans are not the ones who made him who he is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Loaded Lux, I can't diss Loaded Lux because if I diss him, I'm dissing myself because we came up together. You know what I'm saying? Right. We formed something and took it to the next level. 
You know what I mean? So I think like we're we're very instrumental in his career and he's been very instrumental in ours. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean the fans want it to happen. You know what I'm saying? But I just need the fans to understand, like I said before, the amount of energy, time, money, and cost of a battle of that magnitude. Mm -hmm. It's not just simply writing what he wants. Give Lux 40,000 and the battle happens. You know what I mean? Just that battle alone is probably easily $100,000. Just because you gotta pay his opponent and the type of venue that you would have to get to get the return on the money that you put up. So it's a difficult task. It's one that we will do. It'll get done. You know what I mean? But I, I, it's just, people need to understand it's just not as easy as they think just to throw them on the card and just give them the money. Like we've taken those hits over the years, numerous times on numerous events. So it is something that we like to do, but I just, it's just at this time, you know, there's still some more negotiation that needs to go on before we can actually say that that event is actually solid. There was a suggestion there, you know what I mean, of he said pay-per-view, he said streaming, but what people don't understand is like these things all sound great, but you know, it, it takes a lot of time and effort to be able to obtain a lot of these requests, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So one of them was pay-per-view, you know, we could do a pay-per-view, but what they understand, Battle Rap is still while it is big, it's still a niche audience that watches it. People don't understand how much money it costs to do a pay-per-view on television. First of all, you can't just go on with your camera and go straight to pay-per-view. You have to get all types of satellite trucks and feeds and streams that will even take you to there. That that in itself, those costs are through the roof. That's probably like $100,000 right there, okay? and then. To even be on pay-per-view, you have to guarantee them a certain amount of buys before they'll even pick you up and advertise and carry your content. So that's a whole other set of fees, okay? And then when you start to talk about percentages of streaming, or you know, we don't we URL doesn't stream, and one of the main reasons why we don't stream is we like to present our content in a way with the graphics and give it a whole feel, and that's what people like. It's a whole package, the tails of the tape. When you stream, all your content is out automatically and the fire from your event goes away quickly because there's nothing for people to talk about. They watch it, burn out on it, and it's done. You know what I mean? People bootleg your stream. Like I've seen other people, you know, really do streams and it's bootlegged in real time. You know, you're, you're, you're trying to get an audience who's used to receiving content for free to pay for something, which is tough. You know what I mean? People say they're going to pay, and maybe a few might pay, but overall people are going to watch the bootleg stream. They're not going to pay for your stream. So to guarantee somebody a percentage of a stream is making them an actual partner. And to become a partner in a project, you have to put up money. I can't pay all the bills and make you a partner for one person mm -hmm. on a card, which is probably going to contain at least eight to ten people. And then, if I do that, his opponent is going to want some of the money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? From the stream. So then, where are we left here? How much is it actually going to sell? Mm -hmm. And how do we recoup? You know what I mean? So, a lot of these things that he's suggesting, in theory, are great ideas. But in actuality, will they, act, will they really make sense? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, who you have to know who you're selling to. These are battles that live online on a free platform known as YouTube that is a monster. Doing a stream is cool. You'll probably get a few hits here and there, but your shit is going to be bootlegged immediately. It's not a, The stream is going to be bootlegged, and then you're going to have fans and people uploading it to different YouTube channels yeah. immediately, the same day that it airs. Mm -hmm. And that's just what, that's just the age that we live in. Mm -hmm. So, some of the things are great ideas and I guess you know he probably tried to you know make and come up with some type of equation where he thought you know if this percentage of people bought the stream then we would generate this amount of money but there's no telling that that's gonna happen you know what I'm saying we're assuming that that's what people are gonna do 
You know what I'm saying? There's people when you announce a stream that are sitting by their computer waiting for it to go up so that they can crack it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Around the world. I've seen guys have streams and the stream is from some guy in Japan. You know what I'm saying? So this is something that, you know, has to be well thought out and well detailed. And before you can just assume that you're going to get a percentage of someone's stream and, you know, that is making somebody a partner. And to be a partner, you have to put up money. There was no money offered towards anything. Now, if you're saying, yo, I want a percentage of the stream, let's do a stream, and I want to get this, and I want to get that, when you're going beyond your purse or beyond what you demanding to perform, then you're becoming a partner in a company. And the only way that you can become a partner in a company is you have to put up revenue. You can't just jump in, you know what I'm saying, and expect to get... You know, it's like a 360 deal in reverse. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It just, it doesn't work like that. It's just not feasible to us. You know, so, I mean, he makes a lot of good points. And I understand where Lux is coming from. And I'm not saying that he's not worth the money that he wants. You know, if he believes that that's what he's worth, who am I to judge what he's worth? The only thing I can do is judge, make a judgment on, is what I'm willing to pay him, or what we're willing to pay him as URL, and what actually makes sense, and what's actually uh, economically sound for us as a company. Mm -hmm. You know, so. I'm competing against not just who's hot right now, or who's trendy right now, I'm competing against the whole Canada music. Like when I think about the greats like Big Daddy Kane and Rakim, they still in my top 10. Kendrick Lamar is creeping up into my top 10, but he only put out one official, official album and a couple mixtapes. When Drake hit me up and was like, yo, I, I think people misconstrued in this tweet I just tweeted because I didn't, he didn't hear about what I did and my, said about my release party. He was like, yo, you did rip that song. And he was like, yo, I, I think uh, he said that line was from an intro on his album or something. So.